In this lesson, we are going to discuss functions. Um, so before we can work through any of the problems in these sections, we need to um, learn a couple of different formulas. Um, so this would be read f plus g of x. So anytime that you see this um, open parentheses right here, we would say of. So this one would be f of x plus g of x. So essentially all we're doing is we're breaking apart um, these two um, variables to each have that x in the parentheses next to it. So here, same thing, except instead of a plus in the middle, it would have a minus. This one would be multiplication, and this one would be division. If you wanted to, you could also break this up to be f of x divided by g of x, if you would prefer to write it um, vertically instead of horizontally. So um, the difference between the left side and right side um, of the equal sign is that each letter is broken apart. Um, and given what is inside the parentheses. So the directions are going to ask you to use the tables to find the desired values. So they're going to give us a couple of different tables here and um, we need to evaluate each of these functions. So the first thing we need to do um, when evaluating these functions is to break them apart using the formulas. All right. After breaking your problem apart, you will notice that the number in the parentheses has replaced the x. Okay. So up here in our formula, we have f of x plus g of x. If we look here at number 2, if we broke that apart into our formula, it would be f of 5 plus h of 5. So notice that instead of putting x's in these parentheses, we have these 5's. So when we're going to evaluate these, we will go to our table of our problem, um, the one that we're using, and we will look for that value in the x column. So we're going to find that value in the x column. So right here, if I've got f of 5, then I'm going to go to where my x is 5. So I go to my f table, and I go where my x is a 5. And the number right next to that is my output. That would be my negative 3. All right. So our answer will be what is, what is in the right column. So here, h of 5, we're going to go to our h table and we're going to find out where it's a 5. And our output here would be a 6. So h, I'm sorry. So once we find that output of 6, h of 5 equals 6. So now we just work it out. Um, negative 3 plus 6 would just give us a positive 3 and that would be our answer there. Um, and we'll fill out these blanks here in just a minute. So we would break this one apart to be h of 5 minus f of 5. Okay, So h of 5 would we go to the h column or h table and find out where our x is 5, we see that it would be a 6. Minus, because I'm just bringing that minus down, f of 5. If we go here to our f table, go to where our x is 5, it would give us a negative 3. So notice this right here is the subtraction symbol, and then f of 5 gave us negative 3. That's why we have two negatives written there. And so 6 minus negative 3 should be 9. If you use my keep change opposite rule, you could change 
this minus to a plus and that negative 3 to a positive 3. Other students like to use what I've heard called the Big Bang where the two minuses become a big old plus. 6 plus 3 gives you 9. Either way you think of it, um, you'll still get the same answer. So here we have g of 0 minus f of 0. So go to our g table where our x is 0 and that would be 8. And then go to our f table where our x is 0. It would give us 7. 8 minus 7 would give us an answer of 1. And then letter A, we have f of negative 3 plus g of negative 3. So I'm going to go to my f table where it's a negative 3 and I get negative 5. And then go to our g table and find where our x is negative 3. So g and go to where your x is a negative 3. Notice there is no negative 3 here. So since there is no negative 3, then that means that this actually does not exist. Okay, there is no answer to this. So we would put for our answer does not exist. All right. So up here, let's go ahead and fill in these blanks. All right, so um, domain. Domain will describe your x values. So when they ask you for the domain of two func functions, um, you are being asked to find all values that the functions have in common. So if I'm finding, right here, if I'm finding the domain of h plus k, I'm just wanting to find the x values that the h table has in common and the x values that the k table has in common. So notice the only things, and again, we are only looking at these two columns here because we want to know our x's because your domain is your x. So the only numbers that they both have in common are zero. So we're going to say the domain here would be zero. So here, find the domain of g minus h. Well, I'm looking for my x's in my g table and my x's in my h table. So we're looking at this one again. So we're looking to find all of the numbers that they both have in common. And don't worry about the subtraction here. Literally all we're trying to find are the numbers that they have in common with their x's. The minus doesn't change it. The plus doesn't change it. We're just trying to look at those specific tables. So if you see, they both have a zero in common and they both have a two in common. So we have zero and two for the uh, domain there. So now let's see what happens when we don't have a table. So number 12, we've got f of x equals 9x minus 3, g of x equals negative 3x plus 5. So remember the first thing we need to do is we need to break this apart to be f of x plus g of x. So break it apart, show your formula. So they tell me f of x is 9x minus 3. I'm going to bring my plus sign down and they tell me g of x is negative 3x plus 5. So I want to put these in parentheses because I'm adding this expression and this expression together. Alright, so if we don't put those in parentheses we might get a little confused when we get to subtraction because it's going to change a couple of signs somewhere. So before we can work this out we need to get these out of the parentheses. So first off, can I combine those two terms inside? The answer is no, because they're not like terms. And then, is there anything multiplying out in front? A lot of people would tell me that there's an understood one written out there and it's multiplying by the 9x and the negative 3. But even if there is that one, that's not going to change our problem. So that means that this 9x minus 3 can be released. Then I say, okay, can I combine these two terms? No. Is there anything multiplying out in front? Still just that positive one there. Now if I multiply positive one by each of those, then I'm still going to be left with a negative 3x plus 5. 
And so now we would combine our like terms, which would give us 6x plus 2. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at letter B. So now it's f minus g of x. So I have my f of x minus g of x. So f of x would be 9x minus 3 minus, I just brought that down, g of x, which is negative 3x plus 5. So now I need to uh, remove them from the parentheses by asking my two questions. Can I combine the two terms inside? The answer is no. Is there anything multiplying out in front? There's that one there, but it's not going to change anything. So I bring that 9x minus 3 out. So now here, can I combine those two terms? No. And is there anything multiplying out in front? This time the answer is yes, because this is understood to be a 1, but since it's subtraction, this is actually a negative 1. So we're going to need to distribute that negative 1 into each of those terms. So negative 1 times negative 3x would be a positive 3x, and a negative 1 times positive 5 is a negative 5. So now we would combine our like terms to give us 12x minus 8. All right, so now notice that we have a number here in place of our x. So we have f of 3 plus g of 3. All right, let me wipe that out so it's a little easier to see. So there's a couple of different ways that you can work these problems. Um, I'm going to do it the way I think is the easiest because I feel like if we put too much right here, then it might stress us out and we'll get a little overwhelmed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate f of 3. So if I have f of 3, that means I'm going to replace all of my x's with that 3 in my f equation. So I have 9x minus 3. So if I do f of 3, it would give me 9 times 3 minus 3. So again, I'm taking this 3 inside of my parentheses and I'm putting it in the x's of my f equation. So I've got my f and I'm putting the 3 in place of that x. So that'd be 9 times 3 minus 3. So now I multiply my 9 times 3 because that's in my order of operations. It gives me 27 and bring down your minus 3 to get 24. So we now have 24 for f of 3. Now we need to find out what g of 3 is and we're going to do the same thing except we're going to plug the 3 into the x's of our g equation. So g of 3 means I'm going to have negative 3 times 3 plus 5. So that gives us negative 9 plus 5 which is negative 4. So now I have 24 plus negative 4, which would give you 20. All right, so now f minus g of 2, f of 2 minus g of 2. So again, I need to find out what my f of 2 is. So I take my 2 and I plug it into the x of my f equation. So f of 2 equals 9 times 2 minus 3. So 9 times 2 is 18. And then 18 minus 3 is 15. So I get a 15 here. And then I need to find out what g of 2 is. So I go to my g equation and I plug 2 in for that x. So that would be negative 3 times 2 plus 5. So I get negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. So that negative right there, I brought down from my minus right here. And then I got negative 1 for my g of 2. So again, that's minus a negative. So that really means you're adding these two together, which would give you 16 for your answer. OK. 
Okay. So now let's look at um, this next problem, problem C. So f of x plus g of x. Before we move on, actually I want to mention one more thing. So notice that when you have an x inside of this uh, set of parentheses here, notice that your answer is going to have an x in it. If I have just a number inside of those parentheses, well, we're going to end up plugging those numbers into our x's anyways, and so notice that there is no x in your answer if you're having a number in here, okay? So if you have an x in that set of parentheses, you will have an x in your answer. So here, we will have an x in our answer because there's an x in that set of parentheses, so it's f of x plus g of x. So f of x was x squared plus 2x minus 4, g of x is negative 4x squared minus x plus 10. All right, so remember those parentheses are important. They don't really change anything in the addition problems, but they will change it in the subtraction problems. So I can't combine any of my terms, and there's nothing multiplying out in front other than that positive 1. So all of that is going to release from that set of parentheses. And same thing here, can't combine any of the terms because they're not like. There's just a positive 1 multiplying in front, so I can release everything in here as well. So now I'm going to combine my like terms. When they get a little messy like this, I like to do different things so I can differentiate my like terms. It kind of helps draw my attention to which ones are like. So first I'll start off with your x squared. It's 1 minus 4, so that would give you negative 3x squared. 2x minus x would give you a x or 1x, either way would work. And then negative 4 plus 10 would give you a positive 6. All right, so on c, f of x minus g of x f of x is x squared plus 2x minus 4. Bring that minus sign down. g of x is negative 4x squared minus x plus 10. So now, can't combine any of those terms. There's nothing but a 1 multiplying out in front, so I can release these. Can't combine any of these terms, but there is a negative 1 that's multiplying out in front, so it's going to multiply by every term in that second set of parentheses. So negative 1 times negative 4x squared is a positive 4x squared. Negative 1 times a negative x is a positive x. Negative 1 times a 10 is a negative 10. Now we're going to combine our like terms. So I've got my x squareds, my x's, and then my constants. So x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. And remember, it's because there's that understood 1 in front here. So 1 plus 4 is how we get 5. And then 2x plus x is 3x. Negative 4, negative 10 would give you a negative 14. All right, so now the next problem, notice that these are numbers inside of these sets of parentheses, so there's just going to be one number for our answers. So we have f of 3 plus g of 3. So I've got to figure out what my f of 3 is first. So I'm going to take this 3 and plug it into the x's of my f equation. Oops, sorry about that, guys. So I have... 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 4. So plug 3 into each of those x's. So I do my exponents first. 3 squared is 9. Then our multiplication. And then you take care of addition and subtraction from left to right. So 9 plus 6 is 15, and then 15 minus 4 is 11. So that's my f of 3. 
So then our g of 3 means that we're going to take our 3 and plug it into our g equation. So I have negative 4 times 3 squared minus 3 plus 10. So notice the squared is on the outside of this parentheses. So this negative 4 is multiplying by that 3, and that 3 is being raised to the exponent of 2. Remember, your order of operations tells you that you do your exponents first. So we bring that negative 4 down, because we haven't used it yet, and that 3 squared becomes a 9. Bring everything else down. Then that negative 4 times 9 is going to give me negative 36. This just becomes a negative 3, and that's a 10. Negative 36 minus 3 is negative 39 plus 10. And when you add those together, that gives you negative 29. So now we have to combine our g of 3 answer with our f of 3 answer, which would give me negative 18. All right, so now let's do letter d, f of 2 minus g of 2. So f of 2 is 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 4. Exponents first, that gives you 4, then your multiplication. All right, so now we have 4 plus 4, which is 8, and then 8 minus 4 is 4. All right, so then we're going to take our g equation, we're going to plug a 2 into it. So you have negative 4 times 2 squared minus 2 plus 10. So do your exponents first. So 2 squared is 4. Now we multiply. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. This just becomes a negative 2. So then we have negative 16 minus 2 is negative 18. And negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8. So that's 4 minus negative 8, which is essentially 4 plus 8, which would give us 12. All right, so now, same exact concept, but now we're going to work with the multiplication and division. So still break it apart. It would be h of negative 2 times k of negative 2. So go to my h table, and where my x is a negative 2, which would give me a negative 4. Then my k table and go find where that x is a negative 2. So k table, go to where your x is a negative 2, and it gives you a positive 2. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Now g of 5 times h of 5. So g table, go where it's a 5, and we would get 4. h of 5, go to your h table, go where it's a 5, and it'll give you a 9. 4 times 9 is 36. So now we're going to do our g divided by h of negative 4. So g of negative 4 divided by h of negative 4. So g of negative 4 is 18. And h of negative 4 is 6. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. So you could, if you wanted to, you could set this up as a vertical problem to be 18 
divided by six, which would give you three. You get three either way, um, but it just depends on your preference and how you would rather work the division problems. So here, it's f of four divided by k of four. So f of four is nine, k of four is 18, so that gives you nine over 18. To simplify that, you would divide each of them by nine to get one over two. Don't make the mistake of saying that that's two, okay? So it is one half. So now, f of five divided by g of five. So my f of five, uh oh, notice that there isn't an f of five. Our f equation, there's no five over here. It doesn't have anything to do with there being a five over here. We have to look at our x column. So since there is not um, an f of five, we say it does not exist. All right, then they wanted us to find the domain of h divided by k. Again, all they're asking us for is what do those have in common? So go to your h and your k, and what do they all have in common? It looks like they have a negative two in common. All right, so now letter A is f of x times g of x. I'm just using the formula we were given. So my f of x is negative x plus three, and my g of x is x plus four. Hopefully you remember that in order to multiply these, you're gonna use your distributive property. So we're gonna take our negative x and multiply it by each of those terms. Then we're gonna take our three and multiply it by each of those terms. So negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times four is negative four x. Then three times x is three x. And then three times four is 12. Now we combine our like terms to get negative x squared minus x, if you wanted to write the one, that's okay, and then bring down your plus 12. So now f divided by g of x, so it's f of x divided by g of x. So our f of x is negative x plus three our g of x is x plus four. So guys, when you have um, this expression, you might be a little tempted to cancel out those x's. You cannot cancel those x's out because they are connected to that three and that four. So the only way that those could cancel out is if they were the exact same. So for instance, if you had x plus three, x minus five over x minus five, well then those could cancel out because that x minus five is multiplying by the x plus three. But you could not just cancel out the x and the x. Or if you had x plus three over three, you could not just cancel those threes out because that three is connected to the x. So at this point, this is as far as we can go. Um, we can't simplify it at all, so that's our answer. So here, um, f times g of x again. So f of x times g of x. My f of x equation is uh, negative three x plus five. And my g of x is negative x plus two. Negative three x times negative x is positive. It's positive three x squared. Negative three x times two is negative six x. Then five times negative x is negative five x. And then five times two is 10. So now combine your like terms to get three x squared minus 11 x plus 10. All right, so now B, f of x, divided by g of x. So my f of x is negative three x plus five. G of x is negative x plus two. Again, we cannot cancel out these x's because they are connected to that plus five and that plus two. 
and nothing else seems to look like it wants to cancel either. So that is our answer. All right, so number 40, we've got f of x times g of x. So my f of x is x plus 5. My g of x is 1 minus 3x. So I'm going to distribute here. So that's going to give me x times 1 is x. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. Then 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x. Now combine your like terms. So again, you want to put these in descending order so that negative 3x squared would come first. And then I've got a 1x and a negative 15x. So that would combine to give me a negative 14x because there's an understood 1 here. And then bring your 5 down. It would be plus 5. All right. So it looks like we've got a little bit of a typo here. Sorry about that, guys. That zero shouldn't be there. So this is just f of x divided by g of x. So my f of x is x plus 5. My g of x is 1 minus 3x. Um, can't cancel the x's out. Nothing else seems to cancel. But if you wanted to really write this correctly, we would have our x plus 5 over negative 3x plus 1 just to put it in descending order. Um, but honestly, I would accept either one of those answers. All right, so now let's go ahead and flip the page and um, look at the composition of functions. Um, we have a new formula. so. This right here means that it's a composition, and so we're going to rewrite it in the formula f of g of x. Remember, every time that we do an open parenthesis, we say of. So I've got this hint here when reading these functions. You will say of when you see the open parentheses. All right, when evaluating a composition of functions problem, you should always work from the inside out. So the directions ask you to use the functions defined by the tables to evaluate the compositions in the following exercises. So first off, we need to rewrite this, and it would be rewritten as g and imagine this is an open parenthesis, so g of f and then of 2. Okay, so if you're having problems, just try practice translating from uh, one form to the other. So it says to work them from the inside out. So I need to find my f of 2 first. So I'm going to go to my f table and find where it's a 2 in my x, so I get 6. So in place of f of 2, I'm going to put 6. Then I just need to find g of 6. So go to your g table, find where it's a 6, and you get a 2. So now number 4, we would translate it to be g of h of 1. So find h of 1 first, inside then outside. So h of 1, go to your h table, and where it's a 1 for your x, it gives you a negative 2. So then I go to my g table and find where my x is a negative 2. It would be a 4. All right, so now on number 6, we have k of h of 0. So h of 0, go to your h table where it's a 0, and you'll get zero. Then we need to plug in that zero for my k table. So go to your k where it's a zero and you get four. Now we have k of g of one. So g of one, go to your g table where it's a one and you'll get negative two. Then our k table, we'll go to k where it's a negative 2 and we will get a 0. Number 10, we have k of g of 4. So work your inside out 
inside first. So g of 4, go to your g table where it's a 4 in your x and you get 3. And then go to your k table where it's a 3. And you get negative 4. And finally, number 12 f of f of negative 3. Don't get intimidated by the fact that they've got the same variable in there. You still work it the same way. So f of negative 3 would give you negative 1. And then where you have your f of negative 1, you get a 7. Remember to always look in that x side to get the output of what you would get. All right. So now um, next page. So we're still working these the same way. So f of g of 0. So before you work this, notice it's g of 0. So remember in the other problems we said that if we've got a 0 in here, we're going to plug that into that equation. So if I've got g of 0, I'm going to plug 0 into 3x plus 4. So 3x plug a 0 in for it plus 4. To solve, you would multiply those together to get 0. And 0 plus 4 is 4. Now we've got f of 4. So I'm going to take, sorry about that. So now I'm going to take my 4 and plug it into the x of my f equation. So 4 minus 1. So f of 4 is 4 minus 1, which would give me 3. Now b, it's f of g of negative 2. So the first thing we need to do is find g of negative 2. So my g equation, I'll plug negative 2 in for the x. Multiply those two together to get negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So now I plug negative 2 in place of my f equation. So f of negative 2 would be negative 2 minus 1, which would give us a negative 3. And so to be clear, these are our final answers. Okay, so now let's look at C, f of g of 3. So the first thing we need to do is find out what g of 3 is. So I plug 3 into my g equation and get 3 times 3 plus 4. So 3 times 3 plus 4. Multiply them together first to get 9. And 9 plus 4 is 13. Now we plug in our 13 in for our f equation. And that would just be 13 minus 1, which is 12. So now notice that this one has an x in that set of parentheses. So that tells us that we're going to have an x in our answer. So it's f of g of x. Well, g of x, they tell me g of x is 3x plus 4. All right, so I've got my 3x plus 4 in for here. And then we know that when we've got a number or anything inside of this set of parentheses, we're just going to plug it into the x of that other equation. So I'm going to plug in 3x plus 4 in place of this x right here. So I have f of 3x plus 4 equals, and I'm going to plug in 3x plus 4 in place of that x. So this x right here would be the 3x plus 4, and then minus 1. So now, can I combine these two terms? The answer is no. Is there anything multiplying out in front? The answer is no other than a positive 1. 
So that means the 3x plus 4 can be released, and we bring down the minus 1. And now we're just going to combine our like terms to get 3x plus 3. And that would be our final answer there. So here, f of g of 0, and I apologize if y'all can hear that ringing in the background. My office isn't always the quietest place. So g of 0, so I need to plug in that 0 in place of our x of our g equation. So that would be negative 2 times 0 plus 5. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. So now I'm going to plug 5 into my f equation. So I have 4 times 5 minus 2. 4 times 5 is 20. And then 20 minus 2 is 18. Alright, so now f of g of negative 2. So g of negative 2 first. So I'm going to plug in a negative 2 in place of my x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And 4 plus 5 is 9. So now I need to find out what f of 9 is. So I'm going to plug my 9 into my f equation. So f of 9 is 4 times 9 minus 2. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 minus 2 is 34. So again, to be clear, these are our answers. All right? G of f of 3. So first, find your f of 3. So I'm going to plug 3 in for that x. So I get 4 times 3 minus 2. So 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 minus 2 is 10. So now I'm trying to find what g of 10 is. So I go to my g equation and I plug in 10 for that x. So that would be negative 2 times 10 plus 5. So negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. And negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. So negative 15 is my answer. Alright, so now g of f of x. So they tell me f of x is 4x minus 2. So I'm going to go and plug that guy in there. Then I'm going to find out what this gives me. So I plug my 4x minus 2 in place of the x of my g. So I'm going to plug that in right there. So So 4x minus 2 in place of this x. So I get negative 2 times x, which is 4x minus 2, plus 5. So now we're going to distribute to get negative 8x plus 4. Then combine your like terms to get negative 8x plus 9. So now let's go ahead and flip over to our last set of problems. So these two are pretty interesting. Um, notice that these next two problems, 18 and 20, they have the same exact uh, functions. So f of x is x squared plus 3, g of x is 3x. So the only thing that they did is they changed what we're doing to, to each number. So um, like here, it's f of g of 0 
But notice here, it's g of f of zero. So it shows you the outcome, how it would be different if you started with uh, one expression instead of the other. So just kind of pay attention to those little things in here. So f of g of zero. So find out g of zero first. So plug in zero into your g equation, which would just be three times zero, which is zero. So now I'm trying to find f of zero. So I plug in zero into my x, so that would be zero squared plus three, which would be zero plus three, which is three. Now f of g of negative two, g of negative two would mean that I have negative two in place of my x of my g equation, which would just give me negative six. So now I take my negative six and plug it into the x of my f equation. So that would be negative six squared plus three. So negative six squared is 36 plus three is 39. So these are our final answers. Now we have g of f of three. So f of three first. So plug in three for your f equation. Three squared is nine. Nine plus three is 12. Now we take that 12 and plug it into our x's of our g equation. So that would be three times 12, which is 36. All right, so now g of f of x. Well, they tell me that f of x is x squared plus three. So we take that x squared plus three and we plug it into our x of our g equation. So that would be just three times x squared plus three. And we would distribute to get three x squared plus nine. So now we're doing the same exact equations. They've just kind of flip-flopped which function we use first. So that's g of f of zero. So first I'll find f of zero. So plug in zero for that x. So zero squared is zero and zero plus three is three. So now we're trying to find g of three. So we're plugging three in place of our x, which is gonna give us nine. So notice the difference. If you look here, these two a problems, the only thing that they changed is instead of putting the f first and then the g, they put the g first and then the f. And notice how much different it makes your solutions. So now, g of f of negative two, so the first thing we do is find f of negative two. So plug in a negative two into your f equation. So negative two squared is four, four plus three is seven. Really? Then we take our seven and we plug it into our g equation. So g of seven is gonna give us three times seven which is 21. All right. So now let's look at letter C. So it's F of G of three. So we find G of three first. So I plug three in place of my G equation, which would give me nine. Three times three is nine. 
and now I'm finding f of 9. So I'm going to plug in 9 into my f equation. So 9 squared is 81, and 81 plus 3 is going to give us 84. And for our last problem, it's f of g of x. So we're going to find our g of x, which is just 3x. And then we take that 3x and we plug it into the x of our f equation. So f of 3x means we do 3x into our f equation x, so x squared plus 3. So 3x squared, if you take 3x times 3x, that gives you 9x squared, and then bring down that plus 3. All right, I hope that this video has helped you, and I wish you the best of luck.